<laughs> All right, what is up, YouTube? Mr. Porkchop back here with a great video for you guys today. So today's video is going to... I was actually going to... Today's video is kind of weird. I was going to do a video on um, the entire setup and creation of a Jupyter Notebook, turning that Jupyter Notebook into a web page using Voila, and then taking that Voila web page and hosting on Heroku. But instead of doing that, I decided to make a short video on the main issue that I had with hosting my web, uh, my Jupyter Notebook web page on Heroku. Um, so if you follow this tutorial, uh, uh, yeah, so if you follow this website, which this is the one that I found that, um, you know, when I was trying to do this, and uh, like I said, I wanted to create, if I had to create a Jupyter Notebook that did some data analysis for my last school project. And I wanted to actually use Voila to create a web page of it and host it on Heroku. And this website here basically teaches you exactly how to do that. I will link this website in my description if you guys want to follow it. It is pretty much exactly what you need to know to create um, a Voila web page and host it on Heroku. The one main issue that I had with it that caused a lot of issues was the proc file. So right here in the proc file, this is what he tells you to put in it. And if you use only this, your your project is never going to connect or it's never going to bind to the port on Heroku. Now, this is because of something that I found um, after a lot of searching on the web. But basically, there is um, one additional thing you need to add to your proc file, which I'll show you guys right now. So right here, let me see if I can zoom in on this for you guys. There we go. Yeah, so right here, this needs to be added to your proc file. If this is not in there, then you're going to get an H10 error and your uh, app is basically just going to crash. And if you look at the log files for Heroku, um, it's going to tell you that your um, web page did not bind to the port within 60 seconds and that's why it crashed. Um, so this is the proc file that you should have um, outside of this addition to your proc file this website here is perfect. You can follow it to the letter and, it, and it'll all work as long as you have, um, as long as you have this additional thing put into your proc file. So that was the main reason for me making this video. Um, like I said, this website does a really good job of teaching you how to, um, you know, create a Jupyter notebook, set, create, use Voila to make a web page of it and then host it on Heroku. So um, I can show you the end product here. Um, as you can see on my Heroku, I I went through a lot of issues trying to get it to finally build. I'm on version 15, and now it finally works. But basically, when I click open, it opens to this tab here, which is the one um, Jupyter Notebook that I have. And then if I click on that, it will show me the web page of that Jupyter Notebook. So this is what you will end up with if you follow that web page and just add that addition to your proc file you'll end up with something, well, I mean, it's gonna look different depending on what your Jupyter Notebook is, but this is like basically what my Jupyter Notebook did. So yeah, um, that is the main thing that I wanted to get across in this video, and I will make sure the title of this video kind of matches that error and how to solve it, because that was the main point of this video. Um, outside of that, I did want to show a few things inside of the command prompt window that I felt like really helped me during this whole process. Um, so let's let's jump into that. So if you're not too familiar with the command prompt window, it's going to be probably difficult for you to um, to follow along with this web page uh, because this whole process is all done basically inside the the um, command prompt. So a few different commands that are going to be nice in the command prompt are basically just changing directories, um, which is just cd. And then you basically put the path of the directory that you want. I'm already in C, so I can just like put a documents. And I think I had a capstone project Heroku test. So that brings me to the folder that my project is in. The other commands that are very useful. Um, well, actually, and if you're trying to go up a directory, you can press CD and then just go um, dot dot. And it'll bring you up a directory. Um, you can do that just to kind of move around directories. 
uh, the other thing is basically pushing and pulling your Git repository because you're going to have to create a Git repository and you're going to have to basically hold all your stuff there. And then you push that um, repository to Heroku. Now, um, if you haven't used Git in a while, there are other additional things you're going to have to do, which is set up like um, a different code for your password. But I'm not going to get into that. There's videos out there on it. Um, but what I was going to say is like sometimes when you do uh, when you try to push your Git repository, you end up with errors saying like the, the main branch is not there or something. So what you can do in order to get around that, you can do git push and then do um, dash F and then do your origin, you know, master or main, depending on what it is. You can do um, whichever one. Um, and if you use that dash F, then it's going to force push it. So you don't have to worry about uh, it not working. For this one, um, I ended up using remotes quite a bit. So, yeah, so they think this is better. Okay, this will kind of explain what I was trying to show better. So if you have a, a repository or a project already on Heroku, then this is basically the command you want to do to set the remote, um, set it up so that your Git repository is connected to this project. So you can just do Heroku Git. Um, remote dash a and then you put your project name and then once you do that then you can just do git push um, Heroku master and it'll push it to that and again when you go to push it if it doesn't push for some reason you can use that dash F command and it'll force push it and then that works pretty good um, outside of that again uh, a lot of this is just getting your um, you know creating you can do this is actually cloning um, a repository right from from github you can do that or what you can do is just create a brand new um, repository in whatever folder you're in by doing git init like right there you just do that it'll initialize a blank git repository right in that folder and then you can do git add um, dot and it'll add all the folders that are currently or all, all, all the files that are in that folder into your git repository after you do that then you can do git commit um am and then you just do a comment like initial um, commit or something you do that it'll commit it and then after that you go ahead and just do git push um, if you run into issues where you have to constantly change files and, and recommit and repush and you just want to end up starting your repository over um, i've shown this in some other videos but if you go up into the file where it is located and you click on view over here you'll have hidden items and it most likely won't be checked so like this is my project file right here there's a git repository here but you don't see it unless you go to view and you click on hidden items and once you click on hidden items over here you'll see that the git repository shows up so if you want to start over you can just delete this file you delete the git uh, file and then you can go back to the command prompt and you can just do the whole git initialize again and then it'll create a new one and then you can add the files again um outside of that i think a lot of the things that i ended up having to do was just check the heroku log files so um what you can do I think here, if I just do Heroku um, logs and then you do tail, oh, dash dash tail. If there are any like real issues in your code, all of it will kind of come up here in the log files. So yeah, anyway, I hope this guy, I hope this helps you guys if you're having issues um, trying to get a Heroku app to work. Um, definitely one of the biggest things that kind of helped me throughout this whole process was just kind of keeping an open mind, constantly trying things. Don't be afraid to keep trying things. Keep like get familiar with the command prompt, how to, you know, do additional commits, how to, you know, just start start over if you have to, or change files, recommit it, repush it. Get really good at how at like changing stuff and repushing your project because you're gonna go through a bunch of different versions of it and you don't want you're gonna get stuck along the way. Um, another thing you're probably going to have to do too is like if you look in your log files and it says something like file not found error um, when you're trying to pull information from a CSV file, um, just make sure your CSV file is in the same folder and is in your Git repository 
uh, uh, and on top of that, make sure that when you are calling that CSV file in your Jupyter Notebook, like when you type in, um, you know, if you're trying to put it into a data frame, if you're doing like data frame read CSV, make sure that the file path isn't like an absolute file path. Make sure it's just the file name. So it should just be like, for me, it's just uh, housing.csv. Make sure that's all that's in your Jupyter Notebook. Um, I know originally I had an issue where I had a file not found error with this, and that's because I was running the Jupyter Notebook locally on my computer at first, and I had a um, absolute file path set up in my Jupyter Notebook. So it said like, you know, my C drive, users, Peter, documents, wherever that file was. And when I went push it to Heroku, Heroku didn't know what that was because it's not working on my local machine. It was working for my Git repository. So all I needed to do was add my CSV files to my Git repository and then erase that absolute path and just put in my file name. And that fixed that issue. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got for this video. I know it's not like a full in-depth tutorial on anything, but I think this video is really going to help people that are already you know, through the process of following this website over here and then can't get their project to actually open. It's super frustrating because this is a great, this is a great guide to how to do it, but this proc file really screws everybody because there's a piece missing. And unfortunately this used to work, but now because of some update, you need to add that additional, um, that additional information into the proc file to get it to work. So Anyway, that's what I got for you guys for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, let me know if you guys want me to do like a full walkthrough of the Jupyter Notebook, um, voila, Heroku um, thing. Like if you guys want me to make a video of me just following this, you know, this web page so that you guys can see it actually done uh, instead of just having the written notes, uh, leave me a comment below and maybe I'll do it in the future when I have time. But that's it. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the page and continuing to watch my videos. Uh, it's awesome. I'm going to be trying to bring out more content to you guys. Uh, my next next big thing that I'm going to be getting into is going to be like <laughs> game programming in Unity and C Sharp. So that's going to be my focus. That'll probably be what a lot of my future videos are on. Um, so hopefully if you're interested in that, you can, uh, you'll see it. And I'll still do different Python data analysis stuff along the way, most likely. Um, yeah, that's all I got.